Hello, I'd like to present our paper on at-home pupillometry using smartphone facial identification cameras. This project is a collaboration between the UCSD Design Lab, the UCSD Center for Mental Health Technology, and the Digital Health Lab at UCSD. Our work focuses on developing a pupillometry method to increase accessibility. Pupillometry is a measurement of the pupil that is commonly done as part of psychiatric tests. The pupil is known to respond to light stimuli, strong emotions, and even cognition. Recent psychiatric research also demonstrates that pupillometry is correlated with several neurological diseases, and there's a strong possibility that pupil measurements could lend themselves well as possible digital biomarkers for future disease screenings. However, pupillometry is normally performed in lab with clinical pupillometers that can cost upwards of $10,000. This creates access issues for many participants, especially older adults. Only participants in the immediate vicinity and or those that have the means to travel to the clinic have access to this type of technology. A major part of our goal was to work towards enabling more accessibility in pupillometry. We hope this can aid in the development in the developing clinical field that utilizes pupillometry as a biomarker for neurological diseases and eventually enable at-home screening for a number of neurological diseases such as Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's, and even ADHD. Previous attempts at smartphone-based pupillometry have been made that use the RTP camera in the smartphone flash. These works have a number of limitations, including the required attachments and the poor accuracy of their validation studies. All the works that we could find require illumination of the smartphone flashlight, which limits the types of pupil response tests that can be performed. This is shown on the graph on the right, where the black smartphone reading stops for large sections of the test compared to the red pupillometer reading. Lastly, because the prior works utilize the RGB cameras on smartphones, they generally perform very poorly on eyes with darker iris colors. Our work seeks to address the challenges of smartphone-based pupillometry in a step towards smartphone-based pupillometry that is, or is viable for research applications. We repurpose the facial recognition system which includes the near-infrared camera and the near-infrared light source. Just like clinical pupillometers, using a near-infrared spectrum allows measurements without visible light that would clearly discern between the iris and the pupil as seen in the video on the right. However, repurposing the facial recognition system presents a challenge because of the low pixel density of the images. We use an image processing pipeline in a convolutional neural network model to detect the pupil with sub-pixel accuracy. Using the front-facing RGB camera, along with the near-infrared camera for facial recognition, we can take two images from different viewpoints to estimate the distance between the smartphone camera and the pupil. To calculate the distance, we compare the center of the pupil from an RGB image taken just before the video to the center of the pupil location in the initial near-infrared video frames. It is important to recognize here that the RGB image is only used for distance calculations and it is not used in the pupil diameter estimations. We collect our data through a simple user interface with basic instructions provided by the smartphone. The collected data is processed off device to result in absolute and relative measurements of pupil diameter. To validate the accuracy of our setup, we conducted a comparison to a clinical pupillometer, the Neuroptics PLR 3000. In our experimental setup, the clinical pupillometer records from one eye, while the smartphone records from the other eye simultaneously. For the test, the smartphone administers a pupillary light response test and a digit span recall test. The pupillary light ref reflex test is meant to demonstrate measurements across a large range of pupil diameters and it mimics the types of tests that have been done on previous smartphone-based systems. However, this test can be misleading representation of accuracy. Because, it, because of the drastic changes in the pupil diameter, this lessens the proportion of error between the systems. Alternatively, the digit span recall test elicits small changes in pupil diameter, so the differences between the systems are much more evident. In validating our system, we compare both the absolute and relative measurements. The relative measurement comparison reveals the ability of our system to track changes in pupil diameter, while the absolute pupil measurement tests the ability of our system to provide millimeter values of pupil diameter by measuring the distance between the camera lens and the pupil using binocular disparity. Note, 
that all of our validation tests were performed with no smartphone attachments or aids of any kind. We were able to get good results from the light reflex test with a mean absolute error of 0.39 and a median error of 0.27 millimeters. The mean and median relative mean absolute errors were 5.02% and 3.52% respectively. This demonstrates the quality performance of our device. In the digit span recall test, we expected higher absolute error, but unfortunately we recorded higher error than we were expecting for both the absolute and relative measurements. This demonstrates the importance of these types of higher quality tests for pupil measurement systems. From the data, we suspect that some of the error is due to increased length of digit span recall tests. Since the digit span recall test is much longer, the participant has to hold the phone steady for a much longer period of time during the testing. We were able to deploy our system by sending password protected Google Pixel 4 smartphones outfitted with a passive scope attachment to directly to the homes of older adult study participants. These participants received a 15 to 30 minute Zoom call in which they learned how to use the device, self-administered a pupil response test, and answered questions about the experience. In the usability study, we found that all participants positioned the phone at the eye initiated the test successfully. However, we did notice a few usability issues during our study, with the most common being difficulty in unlocking or turning on the smartphone, and this was usually for the first time smartphone users in the study. Of the 15 total participants, 8 of the participants had at least 80% usable data, 2 participants had mostly usable data, and 5 participants had mostly unusable data. Most of this unusable data came from low-hanging eyelids. Um, this was a problem that we did not experience during the validation testing because of most of our test subjects were younger adults. Some possible improvements of our system include altering some of the instructions and changing the imaging angle of the device to avoid obstruction of the eyelid. Additionally, we plan to implement iris detection rather than just pupil detection such that the iris can be used as a reference for the absolute measurement. We suspect that this will greatly improve the performance of our absolute measurements during longer pupil response tests.